Welcome. My name is Al Rodenberg, and this is a new series of video podcasts introducing entrepreneurs and business owners from all over the world. Today, I'll be visiting with Jim Briggs. From a young age, Jim always knew he wanted to fix bad tech. At age six, he pulled all the keys off his dad's Smith Corona typewriter and attempted to reinstall them in the right order, such as A, B, C, etc. In the end, he used Elmer's wood glue. From that time on, he and his dad loved to repair broken tech from radio shack RC cars, that, I guess that's remote control, to their original, to the original TRS-80 color computer. Oh, wow, I remember those. Uh, he knew that the tech was all he wanted to do for a living. Jim has been working full-time in IT service since 2003 and has worked with a wide range of companies gaining experience that serves him well in his current role as CEO of Briggs IT Services. He has experience as a field service technician repairing Dell and EMC hardware to remote virus remediation at AT&T to business internet support at Time Warner Cable, now Spectrum. Jim says, if you need help and if you can call him, maybe you can hire Briggs IT Services. Well, welcome, Jim. It's a pleasure to have you here. I mean, we've known each other for a little bit, and uh, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, you're on here. Um, and I, I got to tell you, I, I love the story. Um, it kind of reminded me of when I rewired my parents' home uh, with the phone system. My dad was not too happy with me. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, great stuff. Yeah, good memories. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was your dad happy when you uh, did that to his typewriter? Not, not entirely no <laughs> you know i had to wait till i could sit down again before we started going to radio shack to <laughs> find stuff that needed fixing no i i can understand that but uh, that's great that you and your dad work together on stuff um so jim how would your family and friends describe you most of them would probably describe me as very focused mm -hmm. I, I seem to have this ability to almost hyper focus on whatever it is I'm doing. You oh, that's know, a great if, quality if to have. If I'm spending time with my family, I'm spending time with them. If I'm at church, that's what I'm doing. And if I'm trying to fix somebody's tech, I'm very focused on it. That's awesome. Sometimes, sometimes it comes off as a little bit antisocial, but to me, a lot of people who are really successful tend to be imbalanced, and I'm trying not to be that way. Yeah, I think everybody has a little bit of that in them, but I, I think that's a wonderful quality, the focus part, because if I have somebody working on my computer or whatever they're working on, I want them focused on it. I don't want them saying, Hey, let me call Jane and see what's going on in her life, you know, and, uh, oh, by the way, let me turn that wrench here. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Um, so, Jim, who's been the most important person in your life? And, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I think, honestly, my wife, mm -hmm. uh, we've been married almost 28 years. And she's my reason for doing almost everything that I do. She needs me. You know, when I was single, I, I could afford to, you know, mess around and do odd jobs and not sure. make a whole lot of money and live on a cot in someone's basement, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But once I got married, you know, I had somebody depending on me. I had something to fight for. Yes. And that's the motivation for getting up every morning. That's the motivation for being in business for myself instead of taking a, a, a job and, and having something that was safe and predictable. I, I want to build something and I want to build it for her. That's awesome. Jim, did you grow up around here in the Houston area or, or where are you from? I, I mean, this I is being not. recorded and broadcast around the world. So they kind of want to know a little bit about it. I, I actually didn't. I grew up in Syracuse, New York. Oh, wow. And about the only thing I can say about Syracuse, New York, is it's a great place to be from. <laughs> it's, it's okay. really, it's really part of that original rust belt. Yeah. A lot of industry used to be up there and now it's not. And that's sad. But 
they have some exciting things that they're starting to get into in the future, like biotech. Hmm. Biotech's going to be a big thing there. Um, there's talk of a of a large micron manufacturing facility. They're a a hardware manufacturer. Oh yeah, I'm familiar with so micron. Yeah, there's there's certainly there's certainly some things they're trying to do to you know rejoin the the explosive growth that we have here in uh, in Southeast Texas. Yeah, and there's probably a very eager workforce out there too. Absolutely. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, Jim, when you were a kid, um, I was going to ask you, did you think you'd be doing what you're doing now? I mean, you were pulling keys off of a typewriter, but uh, <laughs> did you did you sense that you would be doing IT work? I knew I wanted to fix things. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know then, you know, much about technology sure i didn't know that computers would become what they have become my grandmother when we tried to get her a uh, a computer said that computers were from the devil and they were going to give us the mark of the beast and we were all going to go to hell but uh -oh. but then uh, <laughs> but then when we got her one and she realized that uh, it was really nothing more than a fancy typewriter that she could use to mm -hmm. to organize her her writings and her poems and all of mm -hmm. those things that she liked. She thought it was the best thing ever. So I, I mean, I don't think anybody knew in in the 1980s what computers were going to become and well, frankly, how dependent we were going to be on them to do right well, anything. So yeah, I, I knew I wanted to be in tech. I knew I wanted to fix things. I, I was always really good at taking things apart. I had to learn to be good at putting them back together properly, like, like <laughs> so the typewriter. Walk, yeah, <laughs> like the like the typewriter, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I I think it was always you know, what I what I knew I wanted to do. That's awesome. Uh, can you tell us something about yourself that maybe most people don't know? Well, long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> I actually uh, sung in an all-black church choir. Really? I was living in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and okay. uh, we were attending a, a church there, and uh, the... Uh, the worship pastor thought everybody sung tenor. Now, you can hear my voice. I'm pretty sure I do not sing tenor. <laughs> but it was a great experience, and, and I have some great relationships from those times. Oh, that's awesome. That's nice. Thank you for sharing that. You know, part of this whole process with these interviews is getting to know you, you know, and, of course, about your business as well. Um was was there a turning point in your life, something that uh, kind of like flipped a switch for you? Well, I, I hate to spin a broken record, but I think I think getting married really mm -hmm. kind of changed things for me. Yeah. Um, when I when I got married, my in laws uh, had a neighbor, and he was doing what I knew at that time that I really wanted to do. Hmm. And so he and I developed something of a uh, apprentice relationship. I, I know a, a lot of young people, they don't know anything about that nowadays, but um, he literally taught me everything that I know from scratch you know, and he did so in, in a very, you know, this is a computer kind of way. And and as I as I grew in my skill set, he would uh, he would kind of let me go out on my own and, you know, bang my head a few times. And sure. we we had this deal where if I could do the job, and I didn't need his help, and I didn't call him for advice, I got to keep the money. And if I had to call him for anything at all, he got half. 
So that was a, a powerful incentive for me to learn how to learn and to learn how to figure it out. And of all of the things he taught me, that was probably the most valuable because technology is running at a thousand miles an hour right now. Oh, it's amazing what's going on right now, especially with AI. Do you, do you AI see AI technology. impacting uh, what you do? Um, I think it has the capacity to. I really hope that at some point before we turn into, you know, a, a scene from the Terminator, that somebody decides to put some guardrails on AI so that they don't decide that, you know, we're unnecessary, like Skynet. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting you bring that up. I uh, had a conversation about AI with someone else just the other day, and it brought up exactly the same scenario. And uh, for those of you who have never watched The Terminator, go watch it. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. <laughs> um, so what do you do to de-stress? What, what, uh, what do you... To get because I, I'm I'm guessing your business can be very stressful at times. It can. When when I'm in the heat of of struggling through a situation, it can be. A, a lot of that is in my own head. Hmm. You know, I, I had a I had somebody tell me once uh, that the customer doesn't know how long it's supposed to take. So if it takes me yeah. a little longer because I'm I'm struggling through something that's unknown and I'm trying to figure it out, the only person that's giving me crap about that is me. Right. You know, but um, when I do get stressed out, when I do need to just disconnect, um, I listen to a lot of music. Hmm. Um, back from the days when I ran the roads working for Dell, um, I listened to some, some talk radio. Some of it is mildly infuriating and some of it is downright comical. <laughs> yeah. And, um, quite honestly, I love to just sit on the sofa and watch stupid sitcoms with my wife. Oh, there you go. Right now we're watching hot in Cleveland. I, I've seen Betty, some of those. Yeah. Betty White is absolutely oh. hilarious. Um, she was an amazing lady. But but being able to just laugh at something that is silly and stupid, you know, for an hour just it, it helps you get your mind off from it. And and that's really what I have to do because of that that hyper focus. Right. Right. Because uh, otherwise, I, I'd be I'd be sitting there pretending to enjoy myself, and my brain would still be chewing on the problem from this afternoon. <laughs> I've it, been there, so I understand it's, that. Yes, it's yes. it's my way. Yeah, yeah, you know, totally. And and, and, it, and it's and it's part of what makes me good at what I do, because I don't want to let the problem go until I win. Good for you. Winning winning is important sometimes even more important than whether or not the customer is pleased with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Jim, here's a question not everybody likes, but I'm, I'm curious, uh, and you don't have to answer it, what would you consider your biggest failure, and what did you learn from that experience? I think my biggest failure in, in business was blindly entering into a partnership without having my paperwork together. One of mm -hmm. the things I discovered when I decided I was going to go into business for myself is that uh, there were a whole lot of things I knew how to do, you know, technically speaking. Sure. Yeah. And there was a whole lot of things about running a business that I didn't have a clue how to do. Right. And one of the things that I did 
was to find someone who, you know, had a great thing they wanted to work with me on. And I just blindly put my hands over my eyes and signed whatever they gave me. Mm. And in the end, the, the, the big deal that we got together to work on turned out to be not so big of a deal. And the whole thing went south pretty quickly. But yeah, I, I guess what I learned from that is one of the people that you have to have that you can trust is a good lawyer. And you don't sign nothing, nothing yeah, without them looking it over first. Yeah, You don't sign a new declaration page on your auto policy without letting them look it over first. Because hmm. it matters. It does. There's a lot things, of details that we things, ignore. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes we're so eager to make things happen and to grow and to get the big deal that we go in with our blinders on. Yep. Been there, done that. Yes. So that's. That, that that's why I'm most... running a billion dollar company because I've done. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You, you and <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. So, Cause, you know, great. we're in a, we're in a big studio and. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Three camera system and. Yeah, yeah. You know, with with aerials on zip wires and the whole deal. Yeah. There you go. Because you know we we did it all right the first time out of the gate. So Jim, tell me a little bit about, or tell us the audience um, a little bit more about your business and and what you what you do for your clients. A majority of my work right now, basically, falls into three categories. Mm -hmm. I function as an outsourced help desk. I get calls all the time, you know, this isn't working or that isn't working or the the printer isn't printing or the the program isn't opening or the update isn't installing. And I I you know can connect remotely usually and fix the issue pretty quickly. I can get in the car and go see them and take care of it if I need to. Um, the second thing that I spend a lot of time on is what I'm going to call network administration. You have a new person, you need to set up an email, a password doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Some setting needs to right. be changed in the central network that affects everybody. You know, new hardware needs to be installed. All of those things are, are part of administering a network. And then that third function is the one I've been doing for the longest. And that's the technician. I'm going to get in a car and I'm going to take out my screwdrivers and my eight pound sledgehammer and I'm going to, you know, make it fixed. Yeah. That, that works real other. well with the sledgehammer, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, so so th that's what I spend most of my time doing. Are there other things that I can do and that I do occasionally? Sure. I help people come up with plans for security and plans for. Yeah, I was going to ask you about security. Data. Yeah, the security thing has got to be big now, isn't it? It is. It is growing as business owners start to realize that they too are a potential target. A lot of really small business owners, you know, places that maybe have a couple of employees and in an office and, you know, a lot of times they think that no one's want to, going to come after them because they're, they're too small, they're too insignificant, they're too off the radar. I wish that were true. It really isn't. Right. I, I worked maybe a year ago now with a, a high-level, uh, multi-level marketing salesperson. And she had a lot of stuff going here and there and a lot of money changing hands and a lot of, you know, a lot of moving pieces. And somehow a bad guy got onto her machine and waited for her to access her PayPal and drained every account connected to her PayPal in about 20 minutes. Wow. Wow. She, yeah. 
she mm. understood that there were risks out there, but like a lot of small business owners, she didn't think she was a target. I gave a talk on cybersecurity a, a long time ago, and you're exactly right. The small business owner, especially for a ransomware attack, is one of the top priorities because that small business owner cannot afford to be out of business. That's right. Absolutely can't afford it. So, um, and if they open up their Google Drive or their OneDrive and think that, oh, it's secure, you know, they should be talking to you about securing their system. Yep. The best protection, bar none, against any sort of virus attack is a rock solid, redundant, off site backup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you want to encrypt my stuff? Great. I'll flush it. I'll restore the backup. You know, eat crap, bad guy in Russia. Say that again. Eat crap, bad guy in Russia. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no money for you. You come back one year, always pay extra for the bread. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Jim, just uh, in, in, uh, we're getting kind of the end of our conversation, which I wish could go on for a long, much longer time. Is there one question that I've not asked you that you wish I would have asked you? I can't think of anything. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we've covered a broad spectrum and I mean, I've, I've got a smart ass response to pretty much any question, but okay. Well, <laughs> good, good to know. It is, it is my way. <laughs> my wife says I'm only a smart ass when I'm awake. Ah, there you go. There you go. So I guess there's that. All right. Well, Jim, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. We really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jim Briggs from Briggs IT Services. Uh, reach out to him. You'll be very pleasantly surprised. Thanks, Jim. Take care. You got it. Thanks, Al.